Benjamin Franklin once said, "Only two things that are certain in life: death and taxes." What are your plans to lower down your taxes? So in today's video, I'm going to share some powerful secrets that you can reduce your tax paying as easily as possible. Hi everyone, this is Thomas. Better mindset, better life. If you're new here, this channel is about financial growth and to learn about how money works and how you want to work with money in Canada. So be sure to click the subscribe button with the notification on for more money-related video like this one. I want to share one of my favorite books in my financial journey. It's called The 15 Secrets the Taxman Doesn't Want You to Know by Dwayne Daku. It focuses on using non-accounting terms to provide you with suggestions on how to legally reduce the amount of income that you have to pay. The book was first published back in 2008, but lots of ideas and concepts can still apply to today's world. Let's jump into it. Taxes have been the single biggest expense to Canadians since the 60s, according to Fraser Institute, a Canadian research company based in Vancouver. An average family needs to pay more than fifty thousand dollars in taxes in 2019, and that's forty-five percent of the Canadian average household income. And not to mention, all the housing, clothing, food costs has increased tremendously. Take gasoline for example; thirty-five percent of the cost goes to taxes. First, there's the carbon tax, which is a tax on top of the federal tax. And there's a tax that the province charge, and finally, there's a GST of all the other taxes. So it's tax on tax and more tax on taxes. Even with the ever increasing tax, Canada is still in a huge deficit. To put it in visual, if Quebec tax 100% at all income generated in the province, it will take more than three years to pay off all the debts. And fund all the obligation they currently have, and also with the current challenge, the government is printing money nonstop. Guess who needs to pay the bill at the end? So during the offer, felt people needs tips and direction to reduce the tax obligation. Usually around March, April, many people want to file the tax early because they're expecting a good-sized tax refund and looking forward to spend on it. Statistics Canada indicates that CLA issued about 18 billions in tax refund in 2020. An average amount per return is $1,800 per head. Technically speaking, CLA is borrowing an $1,800 interest-free loan from each person every year in Canada. Let's take a look at what could happen if you simply pay what was due, but no more, and have those extra funds to invest each year. If you invest $1,800. Each year, in a tax shelter plan for 30 years, at a 5% interest rate, it will give you just under $275,000 as interest. It also means that the $54,000 that you save up can grow to $325,000 that the government was getting instead of you. One of the ways to keep more money in the pockets instead of waiting for a tax refund is to refuse the withholding tax in the payroll. If you're working for someone, Usually, the employer will automatically deduct a portion of your paycheck for taxes, so you can ask your employer to adjust the amount using the form TD1. If there's a change in life, such as spouse or numbers of dependents, credits, tuitions, disability, or caregiver amounts, these amounts give your employer a view into how much income tax should be deducted at the source, and your employer can adjust your tax withholding accordingly. Also, if your RSP, medical, or charitable contribution are consistent each year, you could contact CLA and get a waiver which permits you to reduce your withholding tax. But please keep in mind: do not simply spend all those additional funding. You have managed to get along without that extra cash flow, so you should be able to maintain the same lifestyle. The purpose is to use those extra money to speed up the saving. And also, after you might still need to pay tax only, even the correct of tax deducted by your employer. Reason can be other source of income, such as investment income or other taxable benefits. Secret number two: turning bad debts into good debts. 
Drain defined bad debts where you cannot use the interest charge as a deduction on your tax return. Say John owns $5,000 on his credit cards. The interest on the credit card debts is not tax deductible and is compounding interest. He also has another $5,000 that he set aside for investment and in collecting interest and dividends. Scenario 1, he can cash out the $5,000 investment to pay off his credit card. Or, for tax efficiency, he can clear off his credit card with an investment, then go to the bank to borrow $5,000 to invest back into his original investment, through his personal line of credits or from his home line of credits. Under line 22100, the interest that you pay on the money that you borrow for investment purpose is tax deductible. The investment needs to be an income producing investment, which means it needs to yield interest and dividends. If the only earning in the investment can only produce capital gains, you cannot claim the interest that you paid. Some people are further extending this idea and apply to their mortgage payment, turning the mortgage interest payments for tax deduction. When you are paying down the mortgage, the equity in the property increases and therefore you can borrow more in the HELOC. Then using the money to invest into an income producing investment, which it can be tax deductible. Then using the investment return and the extra tax return to pay down the mortgage and repeats until the mortgage is done. The strategy is called the Smith Maneuver. Feel free to Google it for more detailed explanation, but be warned this strategy is not for everyone. There are lots of risk factors behind it, both in tax and investment liabilities. Please talk to the financial professionals before you implement it. The offer points out there are lots of ways to reduce the income tax. Each of them can only reduce a little, but together they can provide you with a significant impact. There are three common ways. First is deduct consultation fees. If your tax return is prepared by someone who charges a fee, that amount can be a tax deduction. Also, any fee paid for investment or financial advice can be deducted for the income earned. The next one is deferred reporting. If you have investment that matures on a specific day like a term deposit, try to schedule it to mature early in January. That way, you have almost a whole year before having to deal with the tax on the earning. The next one is charity donation. Canada has a generous tax credit system for donors for charities. For example, Mary in Alberta makes a donation of $700. The federal will give her 15% for the first $200 and 29% over them. So Mary gets $175 in tax credit. Also, the provincial give 10% on the first $200 and 21% after, so she gets another $125. So when Mary donates $700 in Alberta, she gets $300 for her tax credits. So the net cost for her is $400. Secret number four, Register Retirement Saving Plan. Register Retirement Saving Plan, known as the RSP, is one of the common tools to deduct taxes. Tom makes $100,000 per year and say his income tax bracket is at 30%. So he needs to pay $30,000 as income tax per year. If he contributes $10,000 to RSP, the income drops to $90,000. For math purpose, let's keep it at 30%. The tax he needs to pay is $27,000. If Tom does this for every year, and it grows at a rate of 5% per year. After 30 years, Tom will have $700,000 in his RSP account. In addition, each year, Tom has saved $3,000 in taxes. So technically speaking, the annual $10,000 contribution really only cost Tom $7,000. Indeed, compared to tax-free saving account, RSP is a tax deferral plan which there is tax to pay when you begin to withdraw. But RSP permits you to reduce your tax now and allows the money to compound growth and tax shelter over the years. Also, the maximum that you can contribute into your tax-free saving is still $6,000 per year, 
where RRSP can put up to $26,000 per year. Two things that the offer points out is that make sure you name your spouse as beneficiaries for your RRSP plans, because RRSP can roll over tax-free to your partner should you pass away. If not, the whole amount in the RRSP becomes your last year's income and easily 50% of the entire plan goes to the CRA pockets. The other one is spousal RRSP. It's designed for high income tax bracket family, where one person with high income tax bracket contribute to their spouse which has a lower income. The main advantage is at the time that you withdraw, the taxable amounts of each could be considerably lower than if only one person was taking the full amounts. This is a way to split income in the future and save on the amount of tax that will have to be paid. Whichever routes that you take, make plans and do not delay. Let time dissolve the tax burden. Can you imagine you call the travel agents and just telling them you want to take a trip, but not telling them when to leave and return or how much money you want to spend on, and so on. Unfortunately, that is the way many people plan their financial lives. Let me know if you want to know more about this book, or tell me what you learned something today. I will put all the links down below in the description box, including where you can buy this book. This is Thomas. If you want to learn how money works, and how you want to work with money, then I will see you in the next video.